Hey folks, I'm Commander Red Falcon, and welcome to the stream. Longtime listeners uh, will notice that I finally fixed my audio levels. So you might actually be able to hear like the ship and the music. Um, sorry about that, but you know, it only took me like six, seven episodes to get this figured out, so. Um, so, since we last were together, I've been working my way towards Sagittarius A, which is right there, and we are one jump away from the Great Annihilator. So, just to give us just kind of a, a rough idea of where we are in the galaxy, Colonia, we're 10.4 thousand light years from Colonia. And Seoul, we're probably closer to 20,000. Uh, well, let's see. Sagittarius A is like 2,000. Oops. Misclick there. There we go. There's the center of the galaxy. All right. Everything looks good. We've got our coordinates locked in. Let's go visit this famous system. All right. First jump of the stream. Right. Everything looks good. Let's hit it. Three, two, one. English. Ah, uh, that never gets old. So this is actually a point of interest on the EDSM map. Whoa. Let's get the hell away from that. I hate black holes. I really do. I always seem to get... I always seem to jump out way too close to the little guys. <clears throat> well. Okay, looks like there's a tourist point of interest here. I can find the thing. Always fun to read these. Get a little history. Okay, they wouldn't put a Taurus beacon that I couldn't access. Why not to put it so close to the black hole? But yeah, you can kind of see it right there in front of us, how the light distorts it. Uh, there should be two black holes in this system, actually. Yeah, Great Annihilator A, Great Annihilator B. I'm going to stay a nice, healthy distance away from that thing. So there's just something about a mass that's so dense, even light can't escape it. No thanks. I'm not ready to get my body pulled apart by forces greater than me. Not today. All right, if I jump out of hyperspace, hyperspace. If I jump out of uh, super cruise to this beacon and get pulled into that black hole, I am going to write a very nasty email to FDev.
Yeah, orcas, beluga liners. Yeah, have a cut there. Um, Tor spot 0709er. This is the largest known black hole in the galaxy. Damn it. This is the largest black hole in the galaxy, not including the supermassive Sagittarius A at the core. Wow. Okay. Well. Oh wow, we can actually like kinda see it from here. Get a quick screenshot here. Can't really get a good screenshot of it. There we go. That's as good as it's gonna get. You can kind of see if you move your head around a little, it how it distorts the light. All right, that thing creeps the hell out of me. I don't like it. Get the hell out of here. Okay, looks like there's a high metal content world somewhere. Take a look at the system map. Oh, there it is. System scan complete. Oh, there's my old buddy validating. He gets around. All right. Let's take a look at this. So, not only is this like the biggest black hole in the galaxy. Um. There's two of them, so Great Annihilator A and B. Um, this one is, how far away are you? Eh, far. <laughs> right, here's Great Annihilator A. It has a, actually here, let me show you something a little more interesting. Here we go. So, looks like A kind of, sort of, no, B sort of orbits A, I don't know. Like, I've heard of the three-body problem, but this is like the one, two, three, four, five-body problem. It's a little ridiculous. I don't quite understand how this orbital, how these orbital mechanics work, but yeah, there you go. It's it's math that's beyond me. But yeah, this is the this is the Great Annihilator system. It's two really big black holes. So sort of like uh, visiting the Grand Canyon, except we don't have a gift shop. All right, I'm gonna grab my next waypoint, and I will be right back. Star density is very 
very bad here. Well, actually very good. It's, I've been in situate. well, you've seen situations where uh, I've been in bad star density, where there's no stars. Oops. Yep. There it is, Great Annihilator A. I'll be glad when we put some light years between me and that thing. She said, don't like black holes. this stream is to get to Explorer's Anchorage, which is the only settlement in this part of space. Um, fuel up, repair up, sell our data, which, ooh, that's going to be fun. And then uh, we're going to visit uh, Sagittarius A, which is the supermassive black hole at the center of the galaxy. Bigger than those two black holes we just saw. And, uh, yeah, that's gonna wrap it up. And then, uh, Fuel scooping. next week, uh, next Wednesday, we're gonna start our journey to Beagle Point proper. Which is gonna, probably gonna be one of our longer legs. Uh, we're looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of, like, 40,000 light years. And there's a couple, ooh, I made a discovery. What did I discover? Ooh, a T-type star, nice. All right, let's see. First, let's see if anyone's discovered this system yet. All right, looks like I'm the first one to discover this place. So, Whenever I'm the first to discover a planet, or not a planet, a star system, I go ahead and just map everything, because, I mean, why not? You'll get a nice, big bonus. It's like a 50% bonus uh, for all the discoveries. And, uh, plus you get your name on everything, which is cool. I like it when I can make a permanent contribution to the game and its community. Oop, what's this? Okay, what am I missing? There we go. It's always a little... It's always a... gas giant hiding out. So going back to that um, discussion about the audio levels, uh, first of all, is everything good in the chat? You guys good? Because um, I had my voice way higher than everything else. Um, but thankfully I was able to figure out what the problem was. So um, it's interesting listening to, because I listen to a lot of podcasts. I'm sure a lot of people my age do. Um, and it's interesting to hear veterans of broadcast, um, talk radio, radio, broadcasting. Um, and it's interesting because, you know, when you're growing, when you were up and coming, uh, like a radio DJ or something, uh, if you made a mistake, okay, maybe like 100 people or more, you know, like, Depending on the size of your market, maybe a thousand. Depends. 
Uh, but the point is, like, a small number of people um, saw your mistake. And um, after that, you know, you were good. You know, no one really knew about it. Now everything's recorded, so you make a mistake. Not only are the people listening to it live going to hear it, but you're also going to have um, anyone that's watching the pre-recorded version is also going to hear it, and it, it just compounds, and it's like, okay, yeah. So. Uh, but that's, you know, that's just one of the things that you have to get used to, I guess. Um, but I personally, as a viewer, don't mind that too much, especially when it's like a long-running... Um, podcast, you get to like watch the hosts and the producers grow over time and watch them get better at their craft. And, um, and you know, it, it is a craft. All this stuff. So, I guess my point is don't be too harsh on early, anyone's earlier work. You know, uh, it's it's funny, I still get video I still get comments on YouTube videos I posted seven years ago where they're pointing out all the mistakes I made and you know I, it's not even worth like replying to them in most cases. Uh, the reply would pretty much just be it's like, yeah, I know it's seven years ago. Cool. <laughs> you know uh, but some people just want to get try to get a rise out of here I guess as is trolling culture. This is a lot of stuff in this system. Forty something. I haven't even bothered trying to figure out how much money I'm gonna make uh, on this leg of the trip. Uh, let's put it this way: if I don't make elite when we get to Explorers Anchorage, I will be very surprised. The UI might not update, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to get that. Alright, where are those last three planets? Just how are there no neutron stars in this area? Hold on a second. So one thing I like about using a mouse is you can just hold the mouse button down and just click through all these. Oh, well, I'll be damned. There are not any... Um, Neutron stars around here. Okay. There we go. It's a pro tip for you when you use the mouse. Okay, I guess we're just going to have to jump. Uh, the reason this kind of... Well, I guess it shouldn't surprise me because of where we are in the galaxy, but... My trip up over here... Now, granted, I was traveling below and above the galactic plane. I just... There were so many neutron stars. It was stupid how many neutron stars I had. So I made, I probably discovered at least a dozen, if not two dozen neutron stars on my way here. System scan complete. Fuel scooping. All right. Well, at least I'm hitting fuel stars. So that's nice. 
But honestly, the star density is so high here that it doesn't really matter. And I'm gonna bet I was probably the first to discover that planet too. Weird, we're not even in the galactic core region yet. Is the um though I think that's only I think, I think it's only a couple thousand light years uh like radius is the galactic core region. Ah, here we go, proton. Neutron proton star, neutron star. System scan complete. Okay, not much here. I can live with that. I guess this is our first neutron charge of the stream. Alright. Alright. Grab our next waypoint. So this part of our journey, we're actually on the Neutron Highway. So it's just going to be Neutron Star after Neutron Star after Neutron Star. I'll um stop to re I'll stop to refuel when we start to get low. But for the most part, oh there we go. For the most part, we're just going to be traveling in a straight line. Black hole. Huh. Weird. I don't have to follow you. Yes, I know black holes can't follow you. But the way the light was warping around that object, it didn't look good. Damn near perfect. I'm actually getting pretty excited <laughs> about this. I don't know about all of you watching, but I'm pretty stoked. And this isn't even the halfway point for our journey, by the way. All right, we're finally entering the Galactic Center. <laughs> all right, we're super close now. Of course, as I've mentioned before, new region, more discoveries. Oh, I forgot to tell everyone. I found an amazing star system as I was between last stream and this one. Uh, it had a uh, undiscovered Earth-like planet, which was my first undiscovered Earth-like planet. I, um... Oh. Okay. Go ahead and just scan these so I can get credit for these discoveries. Um... Uh, 
Uh, but yeah, it had a had an Earth-like planet. It had th three uh, uh, high metal content planets that were uh, eligible candidates for terraforming. Um, yeah, and uh, I, I'm probably that, that system's probably worth at least eight, if not sixteen million credits by itself. Um, and I'm only saying sixteen because. I really think it's eight, but I've always been proven wrong. It's usually double what I think it is, so who knows. But yeah, I'm um, real excited about that discovery. Uh, that was my first um, undiscovered Earth-like. Ooh, hello. That's a terraformable world. Very nice. Looks like we're going to have some reasons to scan these bodies. Wait a minute. I didn't see anybody's name on those planets. This must be an old uh, neutron star then. System scan complete. Yeah, WT discovered the neutron star. Wow, no one's actually. F no one's got credit for these. All right. Well, I am down. This this helps a lot. All right. Hopefully, this isn't like a million light seconds away. Up, oh, my buddy validating. Ah, of course it's the last one. It's it's the last one in the list as the candidate. Cool. Well, I will happily put my name on it. Twenty-six thousand light seconds. That's not too bad. So I'll check up on something. I'll be right back. have enough time to plot my next route. Alright. What am I doing on gas? Eh, you know what? I'll go ahead and just grab a... I'll grab a system nearby. B. Ooh, you know what? Let's see if there are any some of the rarer types of stars out. Those are always fun to discover. So, part of my issue is, sometimes the background looks like stars. Like, whatever the hell that is. Alright, well. Alright, well, I guess I'll just grab a fuel star. Neotypes? Never any O-types. E-types? A types. Okay. Yeah, that's 
just be fine. Terraformable candidate right there. Yeah, it's gonna take us a while to get there. Just came out from mowing the grass not long ago. Oh, it feels good to be inside. Nice shower. See how our modules are looking. Frame shift drive needs. It's still good. A frame shift drive should last us until we get to Anchorage. Power plant's taken some hits. Uh, Hull took a little bit of hit while I was off stream. Um, so fun fact, those watching at home, um, don't disengage, don't turn your thrusters off while your ship's in super cruise. Because apparently that causes your ship to just jump out of super cruise, despite the thrusters not being involved with super cruise at all. I don't understand why it does that. I could completely understand shutting the frame shift drive off and it throwing you out into space, but this one, I don't know. As you'll see when I slow down, the retro thrusters don't fire, so they're not being used. I don't know, maybe the frame shift drive Maybe the power needed for the frame shift drive is routed through the thrusters. I don't know. Or it could be a bug. in a pioneer I, I will be very surprised I don't make a lead that it's because I think you need to make a total of 200 that 200 million credits well within that rank to rank up from pioneer to elite you need about like 200 million a uh, total you need to have like 300 million So, I made, I made it up to like 45% just doing the stuff. I didn't even make a lot of discoveries um, between Seoul and Colonia. Uh, I made maybe a dozen discoveries, if that. And the stuff I did discover were like single star systems with like no... The planets. So that's a thing. All right, your par six. So go there, 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 and and now we wait for the results. 
So I'm thinking that Skull Nebula is actually a different galaxy. That's the only thing I can think of. Also, we're coming around a slightly different route. Because um, most explorers or most travelers um, would take the straight shot between Colonia and um, Explorer's Anchorage. We kind of went uh, down and then up and then like over to the side. <laughs> And then came straight up, so um, that probably explains why I've been able to make so many discoveries so far off the beaten path, well, relatively speaking. Um, my plan is for Beagle Point to hit two points of interest along the way that'll take us slightly off of a, whoa, um, that'll take us slightly off a uh, direct path. So the idea with that is we'll be able to make some more discoveries. Did exactly what I thought it would do. So my uh, my computer went ahead and calculated a jump to the nearest neutron star, which was the one we were going to go to originally. But then I just you know picked the star next to it for a soaking fuel. Um, so we'll go there and then we'll hit up. Honestly, might as well just scan these. Ah, Sleeping King, huh? Is he like a bed? Or is he like Odin? System scan. He's the only king I can think of that was known for sleeping a lot. He had the Odin sleep. Not yet mapped, not yet mapped, not yet mapped, not yet mapped. Okay. Okay, nothing worth mapping.
Pretty wild. You can see the star density there as opposed to like right below it. type star cool It looks like we got about four more of these neutron jumps left. And then from there, it's 13 standard jumps. Actually, you can see Sagittarius A right here. You can kind of see it right there. I don't know why I'm pointing, but I'm looking at it. Terraformable. Oh crap, I found a water world. Wow, there's a couple water worlds here. Like, who found that? Ah, first discovered but not first mapped. Terraformable. That's two water worlds. Not bad. It's not bad at all. And that planet looks pretty promising from a terraforming perspective. Well, 
there's at least two planets I'm gonna map in this system. Warning, frameshift drive operating beyond safety limits. other star. Alright. Water world. Candidate. Metal rich. Okay. So we do have a couple water worlds here. Well, I guess we'll go with this one first. It's the one that's worth the most money. All right. Yeah, I want to say Waterworld, Terraformable Waterworld is um, 600,000 by itself. Damn, I wonder what my final balance is going to look like. Anchorage, Explorer's Anchorage, I'll go ahead and, if I do, well, I should be promoted to Elite, and then I will pin my new wings on my suit and ship. Can't really see them very well. Oh, that means I'm going to have to pin new wings on uh, my uh, s stream screens as well. Eh, that'll be fun. It's like uh, in most MMOs, like getting to max character level is when the <laughs> real game actually starts. Up to this point, it's just been grinding. gonna take me 10 minutes. Oh, so I did see something that was really interesting. Um, somebody, well, fans, have figured out how to port the original Doom games into VR. And from what I saw, it actually looked playable. <laughs> like, actually playable. Um, of course, Doom was, Doom is a pretty simple game to begin with. I mean, control inputs like, you know, what? Forward, backward, strafe, turn, fire gun, switch weapons, and uh, interact with objects. Not a whole lot of complexity there, compared to modern games anyway. I mean, the levels in Doom... They couldn't stack floors on top of each other for crying out loud, you know. It was all pretty much like, um, I don't want to say the levels were one story. That's not accurate. Uh, but they were pretty much flat. Well, I mean, there's differences in elevation, but you couldn't have, like, a floor that a player could go to above or below, like, another floor a player could go to. Very, very simple, basic stuff. But yeah, I might have to look into that. That might be pretty fun. I'm a, I'm a big fan of the original Doom games. Haven't gotten around to playing uh, Doom Eternal yet. I want to, but I, uh, I don't know. 
I tend to only buy like one game at full price a year. And for me, that game's gonna be um, Cyberpunk. When it comes out, hopefully in November, Friday they'll push it back. So, there we go, one minute, that's much better. And we're at 300, oh yeah, we're, we're in the influence of that star's gravity well now, we're, we're losing speed. Yeah, we broke 300C though, that's, that's pretty good. But yeah, I'm gonna wait for Doom Eternal to go on sale. Um, that's what I did with the 2016 Doom, and uh, I, I played that last year, I think. So yeah, I think I waited like three years before I bought it. Um, and you know, I found that waiting about 12 months for a game to uh, come out, well, after a game's been released, waiting about 12 months is usually the best way to go about it. Assuming, you know, you don't care about you know, being the first to play it or whatever. Um, for one, the price is lower. Uh, it's a big one for me. And then second, the um, a lot of the bugs have been fixed, or you know they have features that have been released, or um, you know you can get like a game of the year edition, or um, an all-inclusive version of the game that has all the DLC that was added. Which DLC is a whole other issue to begin with. I miss the days when you bought a game and it was it was there, all the things were there. And, you know, and maybe you'd have an expansion pack or two. Um, but, yeah. I need to turn off in-game notifications. I just realized that. Where's the one, two, three, four, five, number five? No. Four. Four is the other water world. Might as well map that one. Um, nope, four is still further away, so no, we're good. to that star. Oh yeah, I can scoop that star. Good. Now I might just go and top off my fuel. Might as well, right? I'm going to be this close to a fuel star. And then that, um, that means I probably won't have to break, take a fuel break until... Uh, we're past the highway, actually. Let's change our trajectory a little bit here. Yeah, because this is like 200 and something. And that's 400 light seconds. We're closer. Let's slow down a little bit. careful approaching the stars because you don't want to go too fast you don't want to go straight at them because um, you're, you might get jumped uh, pulled out of super cruise but you just want to skirt the top of it here and just kind of gently lower your ship into it Just a little 
little bit more. Yeah. Whoa. my next waypoint. Oh, I haven't even put in my next waypoint yet. I'm gonna do that too. Yeah, gotta love it. There we go. Seven probes, huh? See where they land. So hit the middle. Okay, a little left of center. Alright, and then we'll just shoot this guy in the middle. Should do it. to get my bonus anyway. Surface scan complete. All right. And then it was number four. Yep, water world. I can't believe it's been almost an hour. <laughs> uh, I feel like I haven't done anything. Which isn't true. I've done a lot, but... Yeah, that's going to be very interesting when we're, like, truly in deep space. So... Fleet carriers, I'm curious. I wonder how many fleet carriers are going to be out by Beagle Point. Because that would be a really nice um, uh, repair station to have. an interesting orbital pattern. They uh, they don't necessarily orbit. I mean, they sort of orbit each other. My brain just... I, I can't wrap out how they would even simulate physics of the planetary bodies. Not a candidate for terraforming, but you are still a water world, and you're worth quite a bit. So 
we'll see. All right, hopefully that landed somewhere really good. <laughs> Please be dead center. Oh, I think I got a dead center. Yep, dead center. Perfect. That's all I wanted. Good news is I don't have to refuel. So I took care of that here. Starting to see there are more discoveries as we get closer. Terraformable world. Rocky planets can be um, terraformed under the right conditions. Get into this cone. There we go. Closer. Brave you may be, you think that your mind is tough. Come have a go with you. Think you're hard enough. Dive into death and brace all the treachery. Getting there.
That's scary. I, I don't think those two solar bodies should be that close together. I don't like this place. I'm going to get out of here as soon as I can. our last neutron star or at least I'm, I assume it's the last one and then we're gonna have to just take the rest of it um, am I missing something here none of these are neutron stars Oh. Well, yeah, that'll do it. There we go. Alright. Frameship drive charging. Lined up, good to go. But it's helping with my discoveries, so uh, my regional discoveries. I'm missing something. Yeah, I'm missing something. According to my plot, my plot, my um, my route, this is the last neutron star before we hit uh, Explorer's Anchorage. So we'll see about that. Hundred and ninety one light years away. I think we can make it. Wow, it is having a tough time plotting that route. In its defense, there are a lot of stars. <laughs> wow. That is that's taking a lot. 
There we go. Now I'm kind of curious now. Actually, let's do this. Use my mouse. <laughs> yeah, it's right next to Sagittarius A. Star class, super massive black hole. So it's like right next to it, cosmic, cosmically speaking. I'm going to assume that there just are no neutron stars in the middle of the, the, in the middle, in the center of the galaxy. Alright. 11 jumps? That's actually better than what my route calculator had um, predicted. So for those who don't know what I'm talking about, um, I use a third-party website. I'm trying to remember the name of it. It's bookmarked. It's basically like a neutron star plotter. It's pretty basic. You you tell it where you want to start, where you want to go, and you can put in um, star systems in between that you want to visit. And uh, it basically produces a spreadsheet um, that you can use for um, calculating for uh, long journeys uh, because the ship's computer can only calculate a route up to I think 20,000 light years and I mean this thing's done well I, so I usually wait until I'm about to go on the next leg of the journey before I start before I use this tool because um, Star charts are constantly being updated. New new neutron stars are being discovered, so when that happens, it could alter the plot. So I try to, you know, wait until I need it. Ooh, Waterworld. Uh, someone's already mapped that. I'm good. So, because of the star density, I'm a little less concerned about making sure my tank doesn't drop below half. Just because there are so many damn stars here, I can just, you know, hop next to one and fuel. And there's probably going to be some fuel stars along the way. I guess no one's discovered the system yet, right? Yeah. All right. Well, let's get our name on some planets. So, if you do decide that you want to try out exploration in Elite Dangerous, um, I highly recommend you uh, make an account at EDSM, that's the Elite Dangerous um, star map project, basically. Um, and um, now, I only know how this works on PC because I play on PC. I've heard rumors that you might be able to do this with console, but um, basically, 
Um, you're, so for PC, you're going to want to get a tool called ED Discovery. It's it's on GitHub. It's open source software. And what that'll do is it'll read the logs um, that the game generates as you play the game. And that's how you that's how you are able to contribute to the um, EDSM database. And that database is used for stuff like the Neutron Star Plotter, um, you know, planning long-range expeditions. Um, it's all community-driven stuff. Oh, I missed something here. Oh, there's another gas giant. But the reason I bring EDSM up is uh, it tracks on your profile. It will track everywhere you've been since you started using the app. And um, it also keeps track of your stats, such as like you know how much money you've spent on outfitting your ships. Uh, it can keep track of all the different ships in your fleet. Um, you, you can even have like a public profile that people can go to. You can go to mine, there's a link to it. Um, If you're watching uh, my about page on Twitch, there's a link to it there. But uh, anyway, it's a great tool. But um, one of the things I've been using it for is keeping up with how many systems I've discovered. And so far, um, now keep in mind, um, EDSM completely separate from. Elite Dangerous, so um, the first discovered credits are going to be a little different. They may not be the same as in this game versus EDSM because you can discover a planet, a star system in EDSM and get credit for it, but until you turn that data into a starport, um, the game's not going to give you credit for it. So there can be instances where you're credited as the first to discover it on EDSM, but the game itself, someone had found it before you. Someone who may not even be using EDSM, so, you know, it's... But so far, I have made 202... Uh, I've discovered 202 undiscovered star systems. And I'm sure that number's only gone up. Well, I know that number has gone up. Let's see. Yep, no one's discovered this one either. Um, easiest way to tell if the system's undiscovered is you check the um, the main the the main sequence star. In other words, the the star that you jump into or you jump to, um, and see if it's been discovered by anyone yet. And if you don't see it first discovered by credit, then you know it's a brand new system. And regardless of what's in a system, I always like to do a full scan. Um, even though there are planets, even though the planets may not be terraformable, um, the uh, planets can contain uh, resources that other players can use, and you can use as well, uh, that can be used to synthesize, um, you know, fuel injectors, or FSD injectors. Um, FSD injectors and various... Um, ammunition for your ship uh, crafting materials basically so it's always good to give everything a quick scan ah look at that candidate for uh, terraforming excellent Ooh, that one's a candidate as well that one is not. Okay, so we've got seven and eight. And this is a nice planet. Yeah. 
Okay, so seven and eight. And sometimes you get lucky and you find um, planets that can be terraformed. All right, let's see what we got here. Seven, oh, eight's actually closer. So we're gonna go there first. Not by much though. They must orbit each other. Actually, yeah, I think they do. Oh, crap. Uh, and that's the first loop of shame of the stream. One day, I will go an entire stream without doing the loop of shame. I promise. That day is not today. If I was big enough to have, like, a... To, a charity fund that I donated to, I would donate something to a charity, but I don't, so we're just gonna leave that there. It's just a mark of shame at this point. that in three probes. All right. Okay, so that was eight, right? Yep, eight, and then here's seven. Makes sense, they're right by each other. All right, we got eight more jumps. Doubt I'm gonna get this one in three. Probably gonna be closer to four. Maybe five. Oh? Damn. Not bad. Alright. That's the one thing about the Galactic Center region is stars are so densely packed and there are still a lot of new discoveries to be made. We are clear of the star's heat radius? Heat influence? Nah, that doesn't make any sense. I don't know. One day I'll find a sophisticated way of saying that.
lot of stuff here. Yeah, six more jumps. I'm gonna assume this is a undiscovered system. Yep. Yeah. Right. And lots of ice bodies, I see. time I discovered a gas giant in this region. That's interesting. Closer, guys. We're getting closer. Wow. Well, and women watching as well. I'm sure, there might be one of you. Maybe. My wife doesn't even watch the screen. So. I don't blame her. Not for everyone. is lots of fuel stars. Just keeping my tank topped off. Alright, let's see what we got. There's something here. Let's see here. Ooh, high metal content with rings. I always get a little excited when I see those.
weird finding these things. This is uh, there's a lot in this system. Good grief. We're looking at 27. That took a while. <laughs> Let's see if any of these planets are good candidates. I'm gonna assume this guy's no. Well, you never know. Nope. I have yet to see a rocky body orbiting a gas giant. That's a candidate for terraforming. I don't think it's possible. Okay. Well, let's see. Make sure this guy. Nope. Okay, good. They're they're all good. there. Let's hope I remember how to land on a space station. See if this is on unexplored. All right. Not be much out here. stars are really close together.
probably going to be a couple of asteroids. Yep. Got to get those asteroids off my scanner. At least all these bodies are pretty, like, packed in to relatively the same area. Got that going for us. It's all of them. Let's see. What do we have? I'm just surprised there are so many undiscovered systems this close to the galactic core. I figured more people would be mapping these. Not yet mapped this planet. None of these look like they're good candidates. Those are all ice planets, yep. And this star is probably too cool for these masses to support life. Well, at least life that we know it. All right. Frameship drive charging. Yeah, last time I looked at my number of discovered systems, say before the stream on Wednesday, but it might be after. No, no, it was after, so 202. So I probably discovered at least a couple dozen, so it's probably up to like 224 or something. Maybe 230. I'll be real surprised if it's into like 250s. Someone's been here before. Yep. Let's see if there's anything worth looking at. Rocky bodies, ice bodies. Nope. I'm not gonna worry about it. Frame shift drive charging. Now we're starting to get to the part where everyone's explored. <laughs> Makes sense. We're like within, we're less than 200 light years from Explorer's Anchorage. Makes sense. Two 
bodies. Interesting. Discovered system. Might as well go for it. There's always satellites. I mean, the payout's gonna be nice, but it's just exhausting scanning all these planets. Ugh, how many more planets do we have? All right. That was tiring. Okay, let's see what we got here. We have... Oh, well, these all look like ice planets to me. Yeah, they're all ice bodies. Okay, no Goldilocks zone here, it looks like. Oh. I think. Here it is. Alright, we've been waiting a very long time to get here, but here it is. This is Explorer's Anchorage. Well, not the system, but the, the station is called Explorer's Anchorage. Stars are really close together. Fuel scooping. I don't think they're Fuel supposed to do complete. that. All right. Ooh, there's a notable stellar phenomenon. That horizon. What the hell is that? Faction-owned installation. Dave's carrier. Explorer's Anchorage. That's where we want to be. I think the system has a population of like 750,000 people. It's a very small population. It's like a medium sized city, I think. Or maybe a small, large city. I don't even make sense.
Oh, it looks like there are cruise ships out here too. Cruise ships, a couple sidewinders. I'm not too worried about sidewinders. Little baby ships. Okay, so it looks like the controlling faction is Deep Space Surveys. Dawn Light Core Mining Operations. A Order of Imagination. Transorbital Dynamics. Mishka Corp. I'll neutral it. I'll neutral me. So it looks like. Uh, hmm. I don't know, let me dock first and see if I can spread my. Um, spread some goodwill around. Because I might be able to sell my data to more than one of these factions. As you never know, Deep Space Surveys has 67 influence, but I don't know. Don like core mining operations might get control of the system next. You never know. Gonna loop a shame explorers anchorage. Come on. Uh this is stupid. Earth like planet discovered. Cool. Ah, that must be this planet here. Oh, it's on the other side of the planet, okay. We're just gonna go around long way then. Trying to stay out of that gravity well. So it'll slow us down. Well, while I'm here... Wait, no one's mapped us yet? No, that can't be right. Or maybe people have mapped it and they've just never lived to come back. Surface scanned by 50%. Problem is, I'm not going to be able to sell this data um, anytime soon. side. Honestly, at this point, I just want to, I just want to dock and unload my data. Fix my ship up. Really like. 
like it when you go the speed limit. So I'll be nice. I'll go the speed limit. There we go. Yeah, I don't have anything, guys. 38. Ah, there's 38 right there. Good, they didn't give me one right by the mail slot. quite nail it perfectly, but oh well. Alright, let's go under. Okay, we're nice and safe now. Okay, so, wow, 4,000 worth of ammunition. Repairs, almost 5,000 worth of repairs. 38 credits worth of maintenance. Ship integrity, 64%. Fix that up. Paint, 64%. We're just going to fix that up. All right. I know. I used to say that uh, a bad paint job is a sign of a good um, journey, but this journey's so long, it wouldn't hurt to fix it up every now and then all right Let's see my current balance is 127 million seven hundred and twenty six thousand credits so we'll see how much money I make off this huh yeah it's gonna take a while guys there's a lot of data for it to calculate what well, does that We have here stars, landfall planets and moons, settlements, stations. Hmm. There's no other like nothing's still working. At least I can still look here. Dave's Carrier, Void Explorer. Okay, so those are carriers. What the hell is Event Horizon? A faction owned installation. Structures of this file important to local factions, which can be targeted. Who's the owner of that? Looks like we have a notable stellar phenomenon. Do, 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 do. Wow, that thing's still going. Okay, so it doesn't look like there's another station I can sell stuff to. So we're just going to sell all of our stuff to um, the station. Like we actually have a, a fellow explorer that's been out this way. Uh, this is actually the first time I've been out here, the Explorer's Anchorage. So, oh shit. Okay, here we are. All right, first page, 23 million credits. Let's go ahead and get that taken care of. I'm sure I've got a few first find credits. Incoming 
All right, congratulations. First to discover. <laughs> oh, uh, that's a lot of that's a lot of systems. All right. Second page, another. Uh, it's 30 million credits here. First to discover, you are in the following acolytes. That's a lot of damn acolytes. Sell page, 26 million. Yeah, what's really interesting is uh, seeing all these carriers out here, fleet carriers. I'm curious to see how that's going to affect future exploration expeditions. All right, first to discover end map. Oh wow, look at that! First to discover, and this looks like the last page. Fifteen million. All right, look at that. Okay, and of course there's the <laughs> the map here. Oh, you're kidding me. Ah, oh, that still wasn't enough to get elite rank. <laughs> uh, okay, well, I was hoping that I'd have elite rank before we left um, this region of space, but I guess not. So, I mean, I'll definitely have it when I get back from Beagle Point, that's for sure. Uh, holy crap. All right, let's see. Well, no point in going and taking a look. Um, updating my wings or anything. I don't really need to do that. Uh, all right, well, we are right at the two hour mark, but I wanna finish this up with a quick little visit to Sagittarius A. Check something real quick. All right, just had to catch up on the chat. Uh, so a question came up on how long I've been out here. Um, well, I'm going to, well, okay. I'm gonna answer that question two ways. Um, I left Colonia around the 15th of this month. So I've been out, I guess, out of civilized space that long. Um, if you want to know when I left the bubble, I left the bubble around July 13th, so um, about a month and a half. Okay, I think I can just like fly under this guy, I think it'll be okay, right? A 
light off. Oh, and there it is. get this mass lock off my ship and we're gonna go see uh, the center of the galaxy oh let me see here that's just saying that my reputation's changed Oh, and for those, just keep in mind, I have a VR headset and I have no way of monitoring the chat. So if you say something and I don't reply, that's why I literally can't see the chat. So. Boom. Concentrated signal source, what's that? Oh, a fleet carrier, cool. There's actually, there's probably a couple fleet carriers out here. I'm curious to see how many are gonna be out by Beagle Point. That's gonna be interesting. I bet, uh, Distant Worlds 2 wishes they had fleet carriers when they did that expedition. Wow, there's just a bunch of fleet carriers around here. Alright, I can scan those all day. Let's see here. The center. But yeah, there it is. Um, that's the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy. At least you can, like, photograph this, like most black holes. You can really only uh, get the effect of the light bending around it. At least with this, like, it's so big that it distorts the light enough that you can actually get a decent picture. Wow, you can still see the effect of it too a little bit. I don't know if you can see that, but you can see the light distorting. Oh, did I do a dumb? I did a dumb. I jumped out too early. Damn it. At least the cooldown's pretty quick. Oh. That's what I 
There we go. But, well, I guess I'll have to go back to Anchorage. I really scratched the paint on that one. All right. Let's see. Tourist spot 0082. Sagittarius A is a popular destination for explorers and travelers. It is a supermassive black hole of the type found in most spiral and elliptical galaxies. Radio transmissions indicating its existence were first discovered by Carl Dinsky. Well, cool. Oh! Now that is horrifying on a whole new level. Okay, well... I want to thank all of you for watching. Uh, streams are usually every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, the whole goal of this is to get to Beagle Point and then make a return trip around the galaxy and back to the solar system. So stay tuned for that. Um, this concludes leg two of our journey, which was between Colonia to Sagittarius A. And now we're going to start leg three, which will be from Sagittarius A to Beagle Point, and then a little beyond. Uh, updates on the stream. Uh, you can follow my Twitter account, at RedFalcon2K6. Uh, you can also find archives of these streams on YouTube. Just do a search for Red Falcon Expedition to Beagle Point. You'll find me. I'm on there. Uh, there'll also be uh, a link to it at end credits for this uh, I think that about covers it for all that uh, let me check the chat real quick and see if there's anything I need to address all right no comments um, though we do have four people I think that's still the highest I've ever had on the stream at once so hooray Welcome, new people. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, thank you, folks, for watching, and uh, you be safe out there. <laughs>